Module 1, we've just covered the relevant legislation required for the lawful possession and use of the firearms. Module 2 now covers the operate, use and maintaining of firearms. In this section, we'll deal with the revolver, the semi-automatic, the shotguns and rifles as well. The word pistol comes from a town in northern Italy called Pistoia due to manufacture of handguns we started there in the 15th and 16th centuries. Today, generally modern day terminology, they classify a semi-automatic as being a pistol, but the true meaning of the word pistol means a handgun. And the two basic forms of pistol that we have is the semi-automatic and the revolver. In order to understand how the revolver works, we're going to need to know all the different parts of the revolver. So we'll start firstly with the parts. A is the front sight, B is the muzzle, C is the barrel, D is the extractor or the ejector rod, E is the crane or the yoke, F is the cylinder, G shows the frame, H is the trigger guard, I is the trigger, J is the handle or the grip, K is the top strap, L is the hammer, M is the hammer spur, and N shows the thumb latch or the cylinder release. For directional rotation of the revolver, we discussed earlier that the cylinder bolt notches, which are these notches here, you'll see there's a deep groove and there's a secondary little arrow which actually shows direction of rotation. So this revolver rotates anti-clockwise. If I can just show that in a practical demonstration, we load one cartridge into the chamber. When we close the cylinder, we need to turn the cartridge so that when we close, you can cle clearly see that it's in the one o'clock position. So should I cock the hammer now, it'll rotate under the firing pin and from there it'll be ready to fire. If, for example, I close this in the 11 o'clock position, assuming that the gun would rotate clockwise, I'm going to need to dry fire the gun a couple of times before the gun would actually fire. So, very important to note which way your cylinder rotates so that you can place the cartridge in the correct position if you need to fire one shot so that from there when you cock it will be ready to fire. There are two basic ways of loading the revolver for carry purposes. We can either load all five chambers, close the cylinder, make sure it's locked in position and carry the firearm with all five chambers loaded. The alternative is to have one empty chamber. The empty chamber we place 12 o'clock under the hammer and the reason why we do this, so in case the, ham the firearm drops or falls, there's no way the gun can fire. The only way this gun can fire now is to either cock the hammer and fire or fire double action. So the empty chamber under the hammer is just a safety precaution for carry purposes. We'll now go over loading and unloading of the revolver. To load the revolver, step one, we identify safe direction. We then, using the right thumb, push the thumb latch forward. With the two middle fingers and the thumb, we open the cylinder. And we then hold the firearm in the left hand. The right hand then loads the cartridges into the chambers. You can see I can turn the cylinder each time while I'm loading the cartridges in, so I can load the top chamber each time, which makes life a lot easier. Once you've loaded the, the chambers, we hold the grip of the right hand. We then close the cylinder, make sure the cylinder is locked into position, and from there we're ready to fire. The revolver operates on two basic principles. We have what we call single action and double action. Single action to fire the gun. Single action means we cock the hammer first. If I press the trigger now, there's only one action occurring. The hammer is simply released forward. Double action means I place the finger on the trigger, I then place pressure on the trigger and you'll see it'll cock the hammer and then release the hammer. That's called double action firing. To unload the revolver, step one, safe direction. Step two, we press the thumb latch with the right thumb. Two middle fingers and thumb open the cylinder of the left hand. We then hold the gun in the left hand again so you can see your grip for loading and unloading stays the same. From there we press the ejector rod or extractor rod with the thumb and then we catch the, the cartridges or cases into the right hand. And from there we declare revolver safe. What we'll look at now is reasons why the revolver would fail to fire. Obviously if your firing pin is worn or broken, it won't fire. 
If after firing the gun, I'll just demonstrate quickly, if you fired the gun and you haven't released the trigger completely, it won't fire again. So we need to completely release the trigger in order to fire the next shot. Another reason why the revolver would fail to fire is obviously if there's dirt and accumulation of um, lint and soil between the firing, well, between the, the firing mechanism, your hammer and, and the firing pin. And obviously if we had a misfire where we had a faulty primer which failed to ignite, or alternatively, especially with revolvers on double action. Generally on double action, the hammer doesn't strike the firing pin hard enough, so we get what we call a soft strike. I'll just demonstrate quickly to show you that if we cock single action, you'll see the hammer is in the full cock position. When we fire double action, on squeezing the trigger, the hammer will get to a point, and you'll see it'll release now. That's almost three-quarter way, so the hammer's not been pulled to the full cock position. So generally on double action, we generally get soft strikes, which again will be a reason why the revolver would fail to fire. Another reason why the cylinder would fail to turn is if you've got dirt between the extractor claw and the cylinder. As you can see now, the extractor claw is pretty flush with the cylinder, but if there was dirt under there and this stuck out just a, a fraction, again, there's a possibility that the cylinder won't be able to rotate. Another reason why the cylinder won't rotate properly is if the cylinder, when closed, is not closed properly. It needs to line up and catch so that it's locked in position. What you don't want to do is close the cylinder where it's caught between uh, the two cylinder bolt notches. So you need to turn it until it's locked in position properly. Another reason why the cylinder would fail to turn is especially with the reloaders. When they resize their cases, they don't resize them all the way to the rim. So as you'll see on this case, it's pretty tight. And it gets to a point where it just doesn't fit in. Now again, if, if that cartridge is not seated properly on closing the cylinder, there's a possibility that the cylinder won't rotate either. One of the common malfunctions of a revolver, which we call where the cylinder fails to turn, is what we would call a high primer. Now you can see the primer here has been blown back slightly, and it can, be, it can do that from the pressure of the cartridge. And you'll see on this side, the primer is still countersunk. Now obviously, if the primer is blown back like that, and it's in that small uh, space between the cylinder and the backing wall, then it, it won't cock and won't fire. We'll demonstrate that now. To show how the high primer stops the cylinder from turning, I'll just load this in with the high primer. From here now, if you want to cock the hammer, or you try and fire double action, you'll see the cylinder won't rotate. So that's one reason why the cylinder would fail to turn, is a high primer. Okay, single action, keeping the finger away from the trigger. The left thumb cocks the hammer while the right hand maintains control and direction. And from here we fire. Double action, we maintain the same grip and the finger just pulls the trigger all the way back. 